Days before he will die on the cross, Jesus takes his followers into Jerusalem for the Jewish Passover. On the night that Judas will betray him, Jesus invites his disciples to share a Last Supper. Jesus has to have the Last Supper in secret because he can't let the authorities know where he is going to be because it's very important that he finish his last teaching and his Last Supper before he is seized and arrested violently. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, they're not there at the Last Supper, but the reason they're not there is because Jesus knows that he's about to be betrayed. And this arresting, this seizing could be very violent. It could be very dangerous. Following his betrayal by Judas, Jesus is arrested, tried, and sentenced by Pontius Pilate to be scourged and crucified. The men had fled because the men could have been arrested with Jesus for insurrection as he was. They could have been crucified as well. Jesus called the disciples to follow him, and the one thing that they have failed to do, many of the disciples, is to follow Jesus at the most crucial moment of all, which is to the cross. But Mary has understood this, and she's followed him to the cross. She's succeeded where many of the male disciples have failed. How difficult it must have been for Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene. The last they saw Jesus probably in the temple teaching, in public, healthy, vibrant, alive. It says a lot about the commitment of Mary and the other women and their dedication to Jesus and their willingness to be with him in these tough moments, that they do go to the crucifixion scene. Mary and the other women demonstrated their willingness to go even unto death with Jesus. They were, they were there for him. And they weren't sure that there was going to be life after Jesus for them. sees his shredded flesh. Mary sees the crown pressed against his brow. Mary sees his blood pouring over his skin. She hears him cry. She feels his agony and somehow knows this is all for love. I don't think that anyone wants to die alone. And I know that Jesus didn't want to die alone because the stories of the crucifixion have him asking God why he's been abandoned. So having Mary and the other women there, being aware that they're there, that has to be a comfort, that has to be reassuring. It has to be good to know that when you've been abandoned, there's still people there who care.
Mary Magdalene does something that all of us can do when we're faced with suffering, which is she brings her presence. She can't solve Jesus' suffering, she can't take him from the cross, but she can be present to him. I think a lot of times when we're struggling with people who are dying or ill, we can take comfort from Mary Magdalene and use her as our example, a kind of ministry of presence. He may well have been abandoned by his closest male disciples, but Mary Magdalene is still there. Thank God they were there to go through it with him. He wasn't alone in the end because of the bravery of these women. And I think it must have brought him some comfort at the end. Magdalene's deep love for Jesus will go beyond his death as Jesus chooses Mary to be witness to his resurrection. It's the stunning moment where she hears her name spoken by the one she loves and immediately she recognizes this is Jesus. 